glad to be here. Glad to have you here. Uh, it, it looks like we have a little smaller crowd than what I was expecting, but that's okay. We'll have a, a little bit more of an intimate discussion and uh, obviously, you know, get a little more hands-on with the, w with the code and that sort of thing rather than just uh, talking through slides. Um, just by way of introduction, again, my name is Jared Smith. Um, I work for Bluehost. I have the best job in the world. Bluehost pays me to be open source Santa Claus. What do I mean by open source Santa Claus? Well, they give me a budget to go out and make sure that open source gets taken care of. Um, and what, by taken care of, I mean we sponsor events, we hire developers, we, we, we want to make sure we're giving back to open source communities in a meaningful way. So that's, that's communities like you know, content management systems, Drupal and WordPress and Joomla. That's things like operating systems like Debian and, and CentOS and Fedora and Red Hat. It's giving back to security communities like GRSEC. It's giving back to other applications like the Apache Foundation. We give to the, you know, to, uh, uh, the Mozilla Foundation, things like that. Making sure that, that, that because we use open source and because we're built on open source that we're giving back to, to open source in meaningful ways. In particular, my, my, I have a title that's, that's complicated, Director of Open Source Outreach, but what it really means is that I'm the community support officer. I'm the guy in the company to make sure that we're, we've got strong relationships with open source communities, that we're taking care of those communities, and that we're responsive to those communities' needs. Now, I love photography. Absolutely love photography. This is this is my you know this is my therapy. It's it's cheaper than a than a therapist and and, and it's more hands on. So I love photography. Uh, really got big into photography in the last three or four years. Corey knows this. Uh, you know, I, I, and yes, I do shoot an icon. I couldn't couldn't put a Canon up there. Had to you know I do shoot an icon. But there's a saying in photography that I really love, and that saying is that amateurs worry about gear. Professionals worry about money, and that pros worry about light. And so, what I want to do with the presentation today is hopefully shine a little light on the on the top the topic of Drupal, and in particular, what's what's coming new in, in in the next version of Drupal, Drupal 8, and kind of focus the light on on that sort of thing. We will talk about gear, we will talk about uh, you know money a little bit, but really, I, I do want to focus on. You know, the, the, the get you inspired about what's what's coming in Drupal 8 and why. At least for me, I think it's it, it's a huge revolution. Um, I want to start off talking about kind of where we are in the development cycle of Drupal 8. Um, Drupal 8's been uh, plodding along for some time now with its development. It's been in development roughly three years now, and um, we're, we're we're getting there. It's not fully baked yet, but we are getting there. Um, the beta 10, um, so the 10th beta release of Drupal 8 just came out, came out this past week in, in preparation for the DrupalCon conference um, next week in Los Angeles. Um, and we, we're down to about 26 critical remaining bugs. These are bugs that have to get fixed before we can do a, a, a Drupal release. Um, last year when I gave this presentation last October, we were sitting at about 450 critical bugs. So that gives you an idea of you know, kind of, kind of what what work has been put into um, getting Drupal 8 ready for release. Um, that number goes up and down. It doesn't just go down. As as you you know, get rid of and, and fix some of the remaining critical bugs, we find other things that oh yeah, we got, we've got to fix this, and so that creates new bugs, and so the number goes up and down. Um, one thing I will show here quickly is that one of the one of the people in the in the community actually created this uh, website, DrupalReleaseDate.com. Which actually tracks. So, so here the uh, the yellow is these these were beta blockers. These were things that had to be fixed before we could start releasing betas. Those are those are now at zero. The red line is the critical bugs, and you can see, you know, you know, let, let's just roll this back a little bit. But you know, here here we had 135 critical bugs. We've been slowly inching those down. Um, in particular, over the last three or four months, there have been several international code sprints. Um, there was one in France, there was one in New Jersey. Um, obviously, DrupalCon coming up this next week, there will be a huge amount of sprinting going on to, to reduce that number and get, get ready for release. But we're getting closer, but we're not there yet. The other thing is, though, that you can see as more and more people start using it and, and, and trying to get ready for, for moving sites over to Drupal 8, the number of major bugs, bugs that wouldn't necessarily block a release but are still important and need to get fixed, has gone up slightly. So we're you know somewhere around 800 major bugs. So, so 
we're not there yet, but we're getting closer. Um, one of the other things you can do with this website is get an estimates chart of, of, of what the estimated release date is. And at one point, the number of bugs shot up to where we weren't going to be able to release it until 2017. Um, obviously, that's come back down, and, and you know you can you can see where the release is currently. It, it it's guessing probably September 22nd, based on you know based on current bug closure rates. So so that's kind of fun to just look at and say, okay, are we are we there yet? Are we getting closer? Um, I'm hoping we can get it done in September. That would make that would make me very very happy. Okay, back to these slides for a minute. Um, I want to talk about kind of some of the infrastructure and some of the kind of the behind the scenes things about why Drupal 8 is really a revolutionary release. Um, for an end user, this probably doesn't matter so much, but for somebody who's actually either writing code or interacting with other modules and those sorts of things, you know, these things are, are, are pretty, pretty important. Um, first of all, you know, Drupal 8 is built for the modern web. You know, Drupal 7 and, and, and previous versions of Drupal were really built on, you know, kind of a PHP 4 architecture, you know, procedural code, um, you know, hooks and, and, and those sorts of things, which is fine. But Drupal 8 has really been revamped from the ground up to be ready for, you know, it's completely object oriented. It's built on, on, on modern PHP principles. You know, it's going to require PHP 5.5+. Um, support for PHP 7 is, is in there, and I think we're down to about six or seven bugs that would keep us from be being able to run Drupal 8 on, on PHP 7. And PHP 7 hasn't even been released yet. So, so that's, uh, you know, it's, it really was built for the modern world. If, if you've been in the PHP world over the last, you know, two or three years, you've noticed that there, there's, there's kind of a, a, a renaissance going on in the PHP world. Um, people are starting to, 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 to do a lot of kind of interesting and modern things with, with PHP, and, and Drupal 8 certainly plays a part in the, in the bigger PHP renaissance. Um, it's also built for the modern web. With Drupal 7 and, and earlier versions of Drupal, everything was a page. You were going to get back a page that was HTML, and it had a header and a footer and sidebars and those sorts of things. With Drupal 8, we've taken a step back, and we said not everything needs to be rendered to a page. If we're talking over a REST interface, maybe it's just going to be a, a blob of JSON text. If we're talking over RSS, it's going to be an XML file. Um, there can be different kinds of responses to, for, for different kinds of front ends. And so not everything is going to be a rendered HTML page. So that's changed the way we render content. That's changed the way we do caching. That's changed all kinds of different things within the system. It's really built for the modern web. It's also built for, for the modern developer. PHP 7, or excuse me, Drupal 7 was completely homegrown code. Well, except maybe some jQuery. But with the exception of jQuery, everything else in, in Drupal 7 was built by the Drupal community. And, and while that's OK, there's a lot of really, other, really good other tools out there in the community. And, and we don't have to have this not invented here syndrome of, oh, we can't touch their code, because well, obviously we know better. So with Drupal 8, um, it's built on things like the Symfony framework now. So the core of Drupal is now built on, on, on certain modules out of the Symfony framework. Um, instead of having our own theming engine, we now use the Twig um, theming engine, which several other CMSs use as well. So, so again, playing, be, being a better player in the community. We have a WYSIWYG editor in, in, in core by default. Did we write our own? No, we went out to the, to the PHP community and, and, and found the best one that was out there. We use things, you know, core libraries like Guzzle and Composer for making sure that, that you know, when we need these types of functionality, we're not inventing it ourselves. We're using the best of breed out there of what's already out there in the open source community. And that makes us a better open source citizen as well, because that way, when we, when we have a conference and we get together with other web developers, we're not just talking about the Drupal community. We're talking about the bigger PHP developer community, the bigger web development community. And there's more cross-pollination, which I just absolutely love. Yep, ab absolutely it will. And we've already s even seen some examples of that where because Drupal has started using things in the, in the Symfony, you know, out of the Symfony library, um, we've found things in, that the Symfony community hadn't caught, and the Symfony community had caught things that we hadn't caught. And so, yeah, it's, it's a win-win for both, you know, for both communities. And I, th I think that will continue to be the case. Um, anytime you go write your own library for whatever it is, you know, on your own and don't pay attention to what other people are doing, 
you're likely to, to run into either mistakes that they've already fixed or you know, create, create mistakes that nobody's even looking at and because there's so much extra code to look at. So, so I, yeah, from, from a security standpoint, I think it's a win-win as well. Um, why did, why did uh, the Drupal community decide to adopt you know, parts of the Symfony framework? Um, again, because it's a modern, extensible you know, PHP framework. It is object-oriented in the Drupal community. I knew they wanted to, to go fully object-oriented with, with Drupal 7. Um, Symfony 2 does require PHP 5.3 or higher because we have some, some nice things, namespaces being, being one of the core things there. Um, Really, this makes it easier for, for the Drupal maintainers to maintain the core of Drupal because the core of Drupal is now just some, some extensions of some core Symfony classes. And, and that's, that's hugely refreshing. If you've, done, if you've looked at the Drupal core code at all, it's a tiny, twisty maze of, of dark passages at, at times. And, and so you know, if, you look at, um, you know, if you've looked at the code for Drupal 7, it's very, very refreshing to go look and see, oh, these these classes, and I can easily see what does what and what extends from which class and that sort of thing. If you're not a, an object-oriented PHP developer, it does take a little getting used to, but it's not, it's not as cumbersome as it might seem at first glance. Um, we also use the Twig library, like I said, for theming. Um, I love this quote by John Alban, one of the uh, core Drupal co um, contributors. And when he was talking about the old, the old version of, uh, of you know, the PHP templates that we used in... Uh, in Drupal 7, he says, he says, we hand themers a loaded gun and tell them to be careful, t tell them to hammer in a nail with it. Oh, and be careful. Because you know, it used to be, oh, just include this PHP code and that'll create your theme and just don't do anything dangerous or tricky with your, with your PHP code. You know? It's like, here, hammer in this nail with this loaded gun. Be careful, though. And that's just not the right, the right way to do it. For security reasons, so many of the cross-site scripting and cross-site request forgery you know, issues and those sorts of things in CMSs, a lot of them, those come out of the theming layer because you're taking in user-generated input, you're, you're displaying it back on the screen, and if you don't carefully sanitize that, you're, you're setting yourself up for, for problems. But yet we had a whole theming layer before where it's like, ah, just use PHP and do it yourself. Um, we've changed that to where we use Twig, and we can, we can look at some examples of what the Twig templates look like here once we, once we dive into the demo here in a minute. But uh, yeah, it means some of the themes, are, you know, you're gonna have to go in and, and, and update your themes and, and use something that's a little more modern, but it is, from a security standpoint and from a simplicity standpoint, it's a whole lot easier. Themers love Twig because it's easier for them to wrap their head around than, than learning a whole subset of the PHP language. Um, Drupal 8 is also built for modern data. So in Drupal 7, you know, we added the, what we called the field API. It made, us, made it really easy for us to add custom content types, which is great, but it really didn't have much in the way of, of, of custom fields already created. So if you wanted to create a custom co content type, you ended up creating a whole bunch of extra fields all by yourself. And there's a lot of third-party modules that are simply you know, new field types. Um, Drupal 8 adds entity reference, so you can reference another node or another user or another comment or you know, in, in one of these types of data. Date, link, email, telephone, um, you know, a lot of, lot of interesting fields that, that come out of the box now instead of having to rely on third-party modules for those sorts of things. Um, we'll, we'll show some examples of that here in a minute. Um, I honestly don't know. Probably the ones that were most used and, uh, uh, and, and best maintained. Those are all the ones I use too. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, me too. So the, the, you know, that's, that's kind of why, why I use these. So that's kind of uh, a little bit about the, kind of the framework, you know, kind of the, the code underneath. Um, I want to do a quick installation demo, and then we'll dive into some more of the features of, of Drupal 8 here. So can you guys see that OK? Do I need to make it bigger? That's good. Is that OK? Okay, so what I have here, uh, let me go up another directory here, is a Drupal 8 installation. Um, if you've played with, with Drupal 7 before, you'll notice that the directory layout is, is slightly different now. All of the core code is now in a directory called core. Um, obviously, your modules are in a modules directory. Or if you want, like, per site, if you're doing a multi site installation and you want to do you know, per site module installations, you can still say site, site name, modules, um, that sort of thing. Themes can be here in the themes directory or, you know, sites, your site name, themes for, for, for per installation themes. Sites obviously go under sites, that's, that's, that's typical. Um, 
One of the, one of the other things you, you might also notice is, is that there's a composer.json file. So we are using composer to bring in those other PHP things like Guzzle libraries and things like that uh, as well. There's also autoload PHP because we're using PSR4 and then the autoloading stuff again, part of the, the, the modern PHP renaissance. So that's, that's kind of what the, what the default you know, directory layout looks like. Um, Let's go ahead and, and, and do an installation here and walk through it, and then we'll, we'll do some more hands-on stuff. So I've got that pointed to that directory. It comes up. We choose a language. One of the inter interesting things about Drupal 8 is it's multilingual out in the core, which we'll talk a, a, a little bit more about here. But uh, you can choose your language right from the installation. You don't have to install in English, then add an, a, a second language, which, you know, in the United States, most people install in, you know, you know, just in English and don't worry about multilingual. But when you break outside the United States, you know, most everybody else is doing a multilingual installation. So we'll talk about that a, a little bit more. Let's go ahead and select English for now. We, we can select our, our installation profile. We're just going to do a standard installation here. Uh, oh, I haven't uh, changed the permissions on the, on the settings files here. So we're going to go to sites, defaults. Uh, before, if you if you use Drupal 7, you're familiar with the settings.php file, which has your database connection settings and some other things like that. Um, in Drupal 8, we also have a services.yaml file that says what services are exposed, um, and, and you know if you if we want to look at that, you know the de the, the default is, is 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 pretty simple, but you know some twig configuration, some rendering configuration, caching, you know those sorts of things. So well, now that I've got those uh, set, we'll reload here. It's going to ask us for a database, Drupal 8, Drupal. I think I've got this set up. Oh, I've already, I've already got that installed. Hold on one second. I was playing around this with, with this before my talk. So we'll create a new, oops. I can type. So now we've got a new database. We'll just resend that. Give it a second to chug, and it's just running off my local laptop here, so it's not the speediest thing in the world. But gives you an idea. They've we've we've really done a, a, a I, what I think a tremendous job of updating the installer to make it easier and making it more bulletproof, and it 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 really makes it a whole lot easier to get Drupal up and running than it used to be. Tells you, you know, which modules are installing and, and what your percentage is of, you know, of your progress. So you can say, oh, do I have time to go run grab a soda before, before this finishes? Um, one of the nice things, going back to the multilingual stuff for a second, is if you ins install in another language and you don't have the, the, the language strings installed at that time, it'll go pull the, the latest copy off the web, and you actually get the installer in that in that foreign language if it's been translated. So if I install in, in Spanish, the installer itself is in Spanish. All right, we're almost installed here. And there we go. That's going to ask us for our site information. I'm going to say, Welcome to Drupal 8. I'll put a Email address in there. Here's my username. Put in a username, a password, email address, set my default country, set my default time zone. Since it's just running on my laptop, I'm not going to have it check for updates automatically or email me when there's a when there's a new update available. So we've set up our, our, our main site. Now we've got uh, our, our, our main site up and running. Um, it tells us, OK, Drupal 8's been installed. And oh, you want us to change the permissions back on your settings.php and your services.yaml file. So let's do that before I forget. Do want to have an in insecure installation. Uh, let's do 664. Uh, settings and services. OK. So now we're up and running. One of the things you'll notice uh, right off the bat about Drupal 8 is that we've gotten rid of the old admin menu. We've gotten rid of overlay. Thank you. Um, 
and come up with a, a, a more modern toolbar you, you, if you're logged in as the administrator, which you can either run on, on the side or on the top. I prefer it over here on the side because typically screen real estate, I've got more horizontal real estate than, than vertical real estate. But th th this lets us both manage you know, our, our menus from an administration standpoint. We can also add shortcuts to any page and quickly, quickly get to them on the shortcuts. Our, also, from our user perspective, we can view our profile, edit our profile, or log out from here. Um, so, you know, typical typical kinds of things you're going to do in Drupal. If we wanted to go create a new uh, you know, content type, we could go to structure, content types. I'm familiar. I, I'm guessing that most of you have used Drupal before, so you're familiar with new for you. So let me just show you quickly. So out of the box, Drupal comes with just two basic content types. One's called an article which you could imagine might have, say, an image, a, you know, a, a body of text, and a title. Pretty, pretty simple layout. And a basic page. And this is basically just a, you know, a body of content and a title. Um, we can either edit these and add additional fields, like if we wanted a, you know, a telephone number or something like that. Or we can go in and create our own types. So let's just create our own types here just for just to give you a, a feel for, for, for Drupal and, and, and some of the examples here. So I'm going to create a content type called photo location, just because I want to keep track of all the places where I've taken some interesting photos. So we give it a description. And the title. It's going to be called title. That's fine. We'll go ahead and save that, and then we can manage the fields themselves. So right now it just comes with a body. This is where I can put in some text or some HTML to, you know, for that. But we want to add some additional fields. So we, let's go ahead and add a an image. Uh, do, 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 do. Or actually, we could probably reuse image field. Let's just do that. Okay. And we give it a name. We say what types of images can be installed, yada, yada, yada. We'll skip through that for now because we just want the basic ideas for, for an image. Let's say we al also want to add a location field. So let's add a new, a new type that is just a text field, just a plain text field. Or we can set a location. Maybe later on we'll want to come come along and add GPS coordinates or something like that. But for now, let's just add a new field called location, and we'll just take the settings there, and we'll save the settings there. Okay. So now we have this this new content type that that has a title. It's got a body. It's got an image, and it's got a location. So if we wanted to go add new content, we could go to content. Add content, and now we've got this new type here of photo location. We'll just add that. We'll say lonely pyramid. So there's our body. Here's our image. We can set some alternative text. That works. Now, one of the things, if you're used to Drupal 7, you'll notice is that we've kind of rearranged the way that when you're editing content, we've made it easier for content authors to, to create content. So we've put your menu settings, URL settings, those sorts of things, authoring information, you know, whether it's promoted to the, to the front page, you know, whether it's a sticky post, those sorts of things. He, here on the side where it's easier to get to rather than having to scroll down through a long page to get to, to those sorts of things. Um, so, And we'll set our location here as Egypt. Save and publish. Um, another thing you'll notice um, from, a, from an authoring standpoint is that we've added some inline editing. So you'll notice this little pencil tool up here in the, uh, the corner of the, of the admin bar. If you click on that, these little pencil icons appear at various places in the in the thing, and if we wanted to edit a you know a block, or if we wanted to you know edit our description here, we can click on that pencil, say quick edit, and now if I wanted to change my uh, my title here, 
you can you can you can quickly edit you know pieces of content that quickly without having to jump you know back to the edit page like normal wait for that to load and come back through this interface so quick quick editing is a is a great piece of this um, same thing for well we'll we'll get in I guess we'll get into that here in a minute that's that but that's the basic authoring you know the b basic authoring experiences we now have a WYSIWYG editor right built in so you 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 can add bold and italics and links and everything right from within here without having to add that as a third party module um, all our settings are easier to get to that sort of thing so that's the that's kind of the basic installation and and getting up and running with a with a basic thing if we wanted to uh, you know, extend and add more third-party modules or enable modules that, that aren't already on the system. We can come to the extend module here, turn on, you know, turn on whatever settings we want here. But, you know, that's, that's the basics of, of what, what a, 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 a just a stock Drupal 8 installation looks like. All right, let's jump back to the slides for a second. Uh, come on. Um, so like I said, WYSIWYG editor installed by default. We've got inline editing. We've also got better block management. You can click on a block and edit a block right there without having to jump to the blocks um, interface to do those sorts of things. Um, another great thing, one of, one of my favorite features of Drupal 8 is configuration management. So let's say we just created that, that, that new content type of a, of a photo location, but we want to synchronize that. Maybe we've got a development environment and we've got a production environment. In Drupal 7, that, all that information about that new type that we created gets stored in the database alongside all the content, which makes it really hard to get it from one site to another. So if you've got a development site, you've created this new content type, you want to push that to production. Well, how do you do that without taking the, the, the development data as well, which might overwrite your production data, which isn't what you want to have happen, right? So in Drupal 8, we've completely split off the configuration management from the content. Configuration management lives in the database but completely se in a completely separate piece than, the, than the, the data so it's really easy to move from one site to the other and we've got complete import and export capabilities to be able to move that easily either all your settings or just one individual setting over from one site to another so i'll show you that here in a second um, in drupal 7 the recommended way of moving things like that from one site to another was with a module called features which was absolutely fail. Um, it would create a new Drupal module from what you told it. You say, okay, grab this content, make it, an, make it a new Drupal module. Then you'd copy that module file over to the other site, but it didn't work well. It wasn't built for configuration management. Um, so anyway, let me, let me show you a quick example of this and, and, and how that works. So let's say this was my development site. I wanted to, I wanted to create that content type and move it over to my production site. What I can do is go to configuration, development, configuration management. And this first tab, synchronize, will tell me, all, are there any differences between what I've got in my staging directory and what's actively running on this site? And in this case, there's no configuration changes to import, so we're good. Um, we can do a full import or export here. And again, if, if you do a, a, a full export, it's gonna give you a, a tarball or a zip file of all your, all your configuration management. But, but what I typically do is just do single import or export. I want to export just one setting, take it over to my production site, import that, and away it goes. In this case, we can say, hey, what we want to grab here is a content type, or let's export, excuse me. We want to do a content type, and then we select, oh, this new photo location content type that we created, and guess what we get? We get a YAML file here that describes what we created for that content type that we can then copy and paste into our, into our production site. We could go, now I'm gonna do it you know, on, the same, on, on the same page here, but imagine I had a production site up and running. See, I can go copy, paste, then I could go in and import and say, oh, I, I wanna import a content type, paste that in, hit save, and now I would have that, that content type on my production system. So it's very easy to move not only data from from one site to another, but configuration changes. Oh, I changed the site title. Oh, I added this new content type. Oh, I created a new vocabulary. You know, those sorts of things um, to, to be able to copy from one site to another, which is, which is a, a godsend. It's, it's absolutely brilliant. And, it, and, you know, I can't wait to start build, building sites on Drupal 8 because of this feature. 
So that's, uh, that's configuration management. Um, I, 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 another way of looking at this is that, yeah, again, having a dev environment and you have a node, um, having a live environment and being able to, to, to copy those settings from one to another very, very easily. Does the synchronization feature uh, sync live data back to your development uh, it, it, it doesn't sync directly between the sites. What it syncs between is, is there's a, an active directory and a staging directory. In your, in your site, and so it's, it's at the file system level, but it'll show you what's the difference between staging and active so that you can say, yeah, I want to import that one, yeah, I want to import that one. No, I want to, I, I'm not ready to move that one over yet. So typically what you do is you'll export your active environment on your dev environment to production, you know, to the staging directory on production, then synchronize and import them one at a time or all at the same time, however you want to do it. When you want to go back from production back to development, you just reverse that. You take you know, your active directory on your production environment, move it back to staging on development, and then import those and synchronize those up. And the, the, the UI isn't 100% there yet for, for doing that, but, but it's being actively worked on, and it's, it's, it's coming along. It should, it should be ready by the time that the, that the release is done. Um, the next thing I want to talk about uh, with Drupal 8 is mobile friendliness. I know it's a big deal, especially with Google the last couple of weeks and their mobile getting, you know, starting to penalize, uh, you know, websites in the in the search rankings if they're not mobile friendly. Um, just to give you an idea, here's what a Drupal 7 site looks like on an iPhone. Not very easy to read. It just took the whole the whole web page as it looked before and just scrunched it down so it fit on the screen. Not not very friendly, right? Um, with Drupal 8. You can see it's re-rendered this to, to be mobile friendly. We've got responsive themes. We have support for responsive images, um, uh, better mobile friendly administration. Um, so let's let's give you give you How some. Uh, there's a responsive images module in the core of Drupal that will actually resize the images to, and you can set breakpoints and, and 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 have them reflow and everything. It's it's all part of the core of, of Drupal 8 now. Um, let's let's just give you just to give you a quick idea here. Um, let's go back to our website here, and we'll just go back to. So this is this is you know, hide this. This is what the you know that page looked like that we do created for the Pyramid of Giza. If we turn on the Firefox developer mode here, called Responsive Design View, we can actually see that when we screen, shrink this down to what might you know appear on a, a mobile phone, you notice that the menu collapsed and just has a, a menu link at the top. Um, that there's a link back to home that the view edit delete tabs stacked up vertically instead of horizontally um, and, and, and you know things things fit and, and and as we resize or reshape you know if we have a little more horizontal then we get back the link for the menu and the shortcuts and the user so it's 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 designed so that we do the right thing for responsive you know on on mobile um, so that's 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 a, a, a very a very neat thing. The reason why we push so heavy on on mobile on come on on uh, you know in Drupal eight is if you look at the uh, at the amount of, of traffic that is mobile and the, and the percentage of of mobile you know, phone users you know more more and more traffic is mobile. And if you're not prepared for mobile. Um, you're you're going to suffer for it. And, and that's what why Google did their you know mobile get and you know. Thing over the last few weeks is because they re recognize that the sites that you know, are going to get the traffic need to be ready for for mobile content. Um, oops. Let's talk about a minute about you know interconnections between Drupal and other systems. Um, for the most part, Drupal seven is kind of a monolithic system. It expects to be your content management system. It 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 kind of has a you know the world revolves around me type of a view. Um, Drupal 8 has completely changed that when it, and it's taken more of a view of, hey, we want to play as part of a bigger ecosystem. You know, we want to talk to other content management systems. We want to talk to other front ends. You know, we want, we, we're not the only player in this space. We want to, we want to communicate with, and maybe you've got a system that needs three or four different pieces communicating with each other. So that's why we've put a REST um, server in core and also REST client in core with the Guzzle modules um, so that we can serve up just not, not just web pages, but we can serve up, you know, JSON, you know, types. To, and, and there's a lot of people that are actually using Drupal 8 already in production. They're not using the Drupal 8 front end, but they're writing their own front end in AngularJS or something like that. And then just using REST services, web services, to make calls back to 
you know, back to Drupal as the back end. And, and that seems to work really, really well. Um, you could do this in Drupal 7 with some third-party modules, but it was just kind of half-baked. Um, this, it's actually, in, in Drupal 8, it's actually a core part of, of the system. And again, getting, getting away from this HTML-centric view to this you know, broader ecosystem of communication. Um, I've done uh, quite a bit with this uh, personally. I use this to, uh, to convert a bunch of sites from WordPress to Drupal. Um, use the up-and-coming REST services APIs in WordPress to be able to pull out the content and then, you know, and the users and that sort of thing and, and forum posts and those sorts of things and pull them into a Drupal site. I've also gone the opposite direction. I've taken Drupal sites, moved them to WordPress using those same, same sorts of things. It's a whole lot easier to do it this way than trying to do the ancient order the ancient oriental art of data massage and do it you know, with a database conversion or write a script to convert you know, from one to the other or that sort of thing. Um, so let's just do a quick example here. I'm, I'm going to uh, hit a site. Let's see where I got this. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm just using the cur curl application on Linux, which is just a, a, a web client that's going to go out and grab this file. It's going to send a header to say, hey, I want this back as, 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 J as JSON blob with what are called HAL links. Um, what the HAL links do is make um, web services applications a little more discoverable because they will include links to, hey, this is the link to, to my object here. If I'm part of a collection, here's a link to the collection. If there's a next you know, object or a previous object, links to those as well. And so I, I'm going out, and I'm just going to go out and, and do a git request against this site. And then I'm just piping that through a little utility called JSON reformat. So let's, let's do it first with JSON reformat, just so you can see that it. Oh, did we lose internet connectivity now? <sighs> Shoot. Yeah, if I, if I scroll back up to what I was doing it right before my presentation, you can see that this is, this is what the output is. You know, you have, you have this, this JSON object that shows you, first of all, a link to myself, you know, how did I get here? You know, what type of, you know, what type of this is? In this case, it's just an article. Um, you know, what's the user ID of the person that, that, that created this content? You know, is there a revision ID? Oh, here's a link to the image, you know, field tags that I had, those sorts of things. Um, you know, is a node ID, a unique ID. And if you scroll down through, through the various stuff here, you get to the bottom and we have actually the body of our content. Here it is. Welcome to Drupal 8. I'm happy to be able to show off the REST API. You know, here's the format it's in. It's in the English language. You know. So you can get that type of information in a kind of a machine-to-machine -machine format rather than a human you know, format. So if you have Drupal talking to some other type of front end or you're trying to convert data between different systems, or you're trying to import data from some legacy system and import it into Drupal, you can do that without you know, having to retype all those, all those pages. So that's, that's very, very powerful. It's huge. And it's going to, you know, again, it's going to revolutionize the way that, that people use Drupal. Um, so that's kind of fun. And you can import through the same interface. You can, you can import. So, so the, 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 tip, the, the typical things that you can do with REST interfaces are a get. So you're getting information out of Drupal. You can do a post for creating new content type. You can do a put for updating um, an existing um, you know, piece of data, an existing object. You can also use patch which not a lot of REST servers out there support, but Patch is saying, I want to update this object, but I don't want to push you the whole object. I just want you to change this one field. So you can say, hey, I want to change the title on this particular photo location that we created. And you don't have to send the whole thing and resend the images and all that kind of stuff. You just say, hey, I just want you to change just this one piece. So if you're- Patch is at the field level. Patch is at the field level. It's not a, like an offset and a replacement. No, it's, it, 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 it's at the field level. Um, one of the other great things in Drupal 8, if you've used Drupal before, if you used the views module, it's probably the most used module in, in, in Drupal 7. Basically, you use the views module in Drupal to create, if you want to create a customized list of content. Um, so if you had a bunch of different, you know, let's say we had photo locations and maybe we had, you know, blog posts and maybe we had articles and we wanted to somehow make a customized listing that matched some of those up or those sorts of things, you'd use the views module to create a customized listing. One of the problems in, in previous versions of Drupal was that because that views module is, is fairly complicated, that the release of that views module lagged behind the release of Drupal by 
sometimes as much as six months or a year. So just to give you an, a, kind of the, the worst case example here, Drupal 7 was released in January of 2011, as you can see here. And this brown line is the adoption of Drupal 7. You see, it didn't even start getting any adoption at all for six months until they finally came out with a release candidate of views and people said, okay, I can finally start using Drupal 7 for my production site because they finally have views as part of that. Views itself didn't come out till January 2012. An entire year later after Drupal 7 came out, did people really start using you know, that views module, the, the production version of that views module. Um, we wanted to avoid that with Drupal 8 for obvious reasons. And so one, one of the things we've worked on is putting views in core so that being able to create those customized listings are, are just there. But not only are they just there, but all the existing listings that we have in there. So if you go and list your users or you list your content, those are just views as well, so you can go quickly edit those. Let me give you a quick example of that. This is something that would have taken hours and hours and hours of work in, uh, let me get out of here. Um, hours and hours and hours worth of work in Drupal 7 to try to do. Um, let's go to our, our list of users, just as an example. So we'll go to people here. And you see we have a list of users here. Now, in this case, it's a pretty simple list. There's only one item, right? But what if we wanted to change the fields that showed up in this list? What if we're terrible with names, but we recognize people by their faces, and we wanted to just add a thumbnail picture to that list? In Drupal 7, you would have written a custom module and tied into the hook and done some theming, and, 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 and you know, it, would, it would have been probably two or 300 lines of code and probably a couple of weeks worth of work to get that, that module working. Um, Again, because we're in, in, in Drupal 8 and, and we have views in core and we can just edit these views right here, it's very, very simple. We can either, traditionally you'd go into structure, you know, views. Now let's, let's do that way first. We, you know, we can go to structure, views, find our people listing here. We say edit. And if you haven't used views before, this, this, this can be a little overwhelming because there's a lot of information in here. But this is where you set up what does that view look like. Um, we're going to add a field to our, to our fields that are returned here. We scroll down and say, oh, for the user, there is a picture. So we're going to add that to the list. We can say, do we want a label for it? We don't need a label. We know, we know a picture is a picture. Say OK. Now when we go back and, and oh, we need to save it. Um, we can look at the preview down here. Oh, I don't have a and I don't have a uh, I don't have a picture on my user. So let me let me go back into my user, add a well add a picture to my to my profile here, and then when we go and look at that list, I should have a Jared, no, there it is, Jared Business Small. So there's a picture of me. I add that in there. I save my, my profile. Now when we, we look at the people list here, hey, look, I've got a thumbnail there. So any of these listings of content, you know, if we go to our content list, we have a listing of content here. You know, if we want a thumbnail there, we could add a thumbnail or whatever field we have there, you know, having those views be a, be a part of core is very, very powerful. Uh, yes, it's, it's, it's all part of it. And again, with, with a lot of these things, with, with, with the pencil interface, you can actually find where there is a view. Oh, actually, no, that's the, the block. Where's the, where's the little pencil for the view? Typically, anytime you have a view, you'll have a little pencil there and click, click there and edit the view directly. I'm not sure why it's not showing up on this one. I've got five minutes. I better hurry then. Um, OK, so that's views in core. I um, want to talk really briefly about security. Um, security is obviously something that all content management systems should take seriously. Um, I think it's been a rough week for certain, certain content management systems, or a rough two weeks, or maybe even three weeks for a, in the case of WordPress. Um, and, and, and you know, I, I, I don't want to rag on, on WordPress too much, but, but it's, easy to, it's easy when you're building these sorts of things to overlook common things like, oh, is my database going to truncate an entry 
and put the truncated entry in the database without telling me that it silently truncated the data, um, at least if you're using MySQL. Um, or if I have a, you know, if I have a content, if some content that's going into the database and it's got a multi-byte character in the middle, you know, what's the database going to do with that? And so um, one of the things that's specifically been done with Drupal 8 is since we were revamping core, moving over to Symfony, moving to be completely object-oriented, we took a, a, the time to, to go through and completely revamp the way we um, do things with the templating engine and using Twig, with the way things are stored in the database to be very, very security conscious, maybe, maybe an overly security conscious. For example, when you're, th when you're building themes, themes in Drupal 8 with Twig, all your output is escaped automatically. You know, we, we want people to, to accidentally fall into the safe mode. We want them to accidentally do the right thing and have to go out of their way to do the wrong thing. So if you want to have unescaped you know, information in, you know, printed to the screen, you have to really go out of your way to do that because that could, is, is potentially insecure. Um, so security is a, is, a, is a huge topic. We don't have time in the, in the rest of this presentation to go into it. But, but know that Drupal 8 should be much more secure than, than, than previous versions of Drupal because of the re-architecture, the reorganization, um, that was a priority. Um, last but not least, I want to talk just briefly about, OK, when, when should I update to Drupal 8? What's the, what's the risk? No pun intended. Um, there are production sites in Drupal 8 today. A number of the you know, agencies that are building you know, websites for, for organizations have moved their own sites over to Drupal 8 already to show, hey, we're ready for Drupal 8. We're ready to help you get your site up and running in Drupal 8. I would personally not put a production site of any significance up on Drupal 8 yet. I would wait for the release. That being said, I would be in the code. I would be have a dev site ready to go, learn how Drupal 8 works, get in. If you have, if you have custom modules, get them working in, in Drupal 8, or find a way to do them in Drupal 8 without having to add a, a, a custom module. Now is the time to get involved, get playing with it, get hands-on experience. Um, so that you don't have this thing of Drupal 8 comes out and then you wait a year or two you know, to, get, to get your site moved over. Um, because of the way that Drupal 8 is, it's going to be easier on your web server. It's going to take less resources. It's going to be much, it's going to be more responsive. It's going to be more flexible. You want those advantages for, you, for yourself or your customers today. So now's the time to start, you know, dive into the code. It's not that scary. Um, start looking at, you know, configuration management and how that works. Start looking at uh, some of these new, you know, features and and be ready for for when the when the code comes out and with that I'll uh, open it up for questions so that's an awfully good question um, I think it changed again last week so I can't give you a, a perfectly honest answer because I don't know it's probably changed um, they were the plan was that that when Drupal 8 came out, we would have the ability to move from Drupal 6 to Drupal 8 with the migrate module, but the, the, the Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 path not, might not be finished um, until 8.1. Um, and basically, we've revamped the migrate module in Drupal, which allows you to dry, migrate either from some other type of website into Drupal, or there's a Drupal, uh, migrate Drupal module that lets you go from one version of Drupal to the next. Um, there was a bunch of work on that that was done. And some people said, hey, we may be able to get Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 uh, upgrades in time for the release. And then some people came back and said, oh, I'm not sure that's going to be possible. So it's, it's kind of up in the air. Um, that being said, if it were me and I, was, and I had a Drupal 7 site and wanted to move it to Drupal 8, um, it's probably easier to install the services module in Drupal 7 and use the REST APIs to pull out e each individual object from Drupal 7 and use the web services APIs to push it into you know, to, to Drupal 8 via REST. Um, I've already done that with several sites, and, and it works really, really well, and it's, it's, it's not too complicated to do it that way. Um, when, when, the, when the migrate Drupal module is finished, you'll be able to go from Drupal 6 to Drupal 8, Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, um, using, using those modules. Um, the other, the other uh, warning I will give you about the migrate module and the migrate Drupal module is, while the, most of the core functionality is there, the UI for them has not been written, or it's just barely be in, the, in, the, in the beginning stages of being written. So it's going to require some hands-on you know, writing, writing a few lines of code to get those you know, done until, you know, and, until the UIs are done. And so the, for that reason, you know, if you're writing code, you might as well just use web services to do it anyway. 
Now, it's not, probably not the answer you were looking for, but that's, that's, that's the reality of where we are today. 8.1 should have that. It's a tricky thing. And anybody who tried to use the old, mi you know, the old migrate module to move from Drupal 6 to Drupal 7 and found that that was a, a nightmare, is the, the reason it's so complicated is because they're trying to fix that and, and not, not repeat that, that mistake from times past. You're, you're a braver man than I am. So how about uh, Postgres? Uh, the intent is to have Postgres as a first class citizen for Drupal 8's release. Wow. I happen to know this guy, he's named Jared Smith and he works for Bluehost, who spent an inordinate number of hours in his spare time working on that. Um, I'm a big Postgres fan. I'm not a big MySQL fan. Um, I like my database to either accept the data or reject the data. I don't like that it would you know, truncate the data or mangle the data and insert it and not tell me. Um, just say it. So um, I've worked a lot on, on making sure Postgres works and works well in Drupal 8. We've probably closed out 200 or 250 bugs of different places in, in, in Drupal where you could use Postgres, but it wasn't, slightly, you know, wasn't quite compatible in the way the queries were being written or things like that, or there was minus specific and that's not just about Postgres. We're also wanting to support SQLite well, um, and to a lesser extent, some things like you know, SQL Server or Oracle and those sorts of things. So, you know, Drupal takes, takes the attitude of, uh, we don't want to just be married to, to, to MySQLs like, like certain other uh, you know, CMSs like, like WordPress. Um, but traditionally, there hasn't been a lot of involvement in making sure that Postgres compatibility was, was a priority. One of the things I did is work with our, our uh, Drupal testing team to make sure we had we were able to run automated tests against Postgres. So what we you know, hey, when do we have a failure? You know, is this a new failure? Is this an existing failure? That sort of thing. Um, one of the things I love about Drupal is their testing infrastructure. Anytime anybody proposes a patch for Drupal, it gets run through the automated testing system to say, hey, would this patch actually break other parts of Drupal? And so we've now set that up, and, and they're revamping that as part of the Drupal 8 push as well. And so I've worked with them to make sure that, hey, we can run tests not only against MySQL, but against MariaDB, either MariaDB 5.5 or MariaDB 10, or Postgres, do you want to use Postgres 8.4, do you want to use Postgres 8.5? Oh, on the website, do you want to use PHP 5.3, 5.4, 5.5, PHP 7? So you can mix and match and say, I want this web container, I want this database container, hey, run these tests. So, so yes, I expect that Postgres will either be completely working or 98% working by the time by the time Drupal 8 is released. I'm following those issues. That's your personal commitment. Closely. My personal commitment is I'm doing everything I can to make it happen. I will be at DrupalCon. Right. I'm flying out there tonight. I will be there all weekend you know, with the, with the pre-conference sprint working on Postgres and, and, and testing issues in, in Postgres. I can guarantee I'm going to spend the majority of next week hacking on that. And next weekend, I'll be at the post-conference sprint working on those same issues. So Nice. It will, it will work. Or come talk to me and we'll fix it. Any other questions, comments, complaints, rotten tomatoes? Uh, my Twitter handle, my email address is, is up on the screen. If you have any questions, please, please feel free to reach out. Um, I love communicating with, with folks in the community. I like uh, answering your questions. I like helping out any way I can. And if nothing else, let's go get some lunch. Right. Thank you.